cerebral development happened recently, you know. Just some time ago we were all monkeys. Just recently this brain developed a little bit. So we're little over excited about our own intellect that we started thinking everything in fragments. Our idea of well-being is all in fragments. We think we will save the moth, but we did not think about the lizard. Then we thought, let him eat. It's not for you or me to even think whether he should eat or not. He will eat. If he cannot eat, he will die. This is the nature of life. In human societies, we create situations because to sustain life in a certain way, to protect life in a certain way, because we are not physically as empowered as even a lizard or a bird or an animal or a tiger or an elephant, we are not empowered like that. We have an intelligence, we have a consciousness which is beyond them, but we don't have physical prowess like them. So human societies need to be cultured where both the strong and the weak can exist. But nature is not made like this, only the strong survive, the weak must go. But this is not even about strong and weak what you are talking about, this is the natural cycle of life. And uh, if we interfere with that, it is because we have wrong ideas of life. We have a set of moralities which are not life, which doesn't fit into life, which does nourish life. If you have a morality or an ethic which does not support life, I think uh, unknowingly you are becoming death-oriented. So you will see this happening to people <laughs> who have taken on to big moral values and ethics. They can't even smile for nuts. If they smile, their face will crack up <laughs> because they have created an unnatural sense of life within themselves. All this problem is coming because of a kind of a natural level of self-significance that human beings have assumed about themselves. The worst idea that was put into human mind by religious groups is, you are made in God's own image and all other creatures here are here to serve you. No, no, if you pay… I have paid enough attention to ants and birds and animals and insects, I find they have a full-fledged life of their own an entire system of life, a society, a family, everything within themselves. Why are we thinking we are the only life and all of them are here to serve us? This is the most disastrous idea. We must understand every life has a right to live here as you and me have a right to live here. As much right, not any less right. The ant and the elephant, have equal right to exist in this, this is how nature is created. It is only in human mind we think elephant is big, ant is small. That does not exist in nature. Elephant may be big, ants have democratic numbers <laughs> If we hold a vote, ants will win <laughs> So if you go by human values and hold a democratic election in the jungle, ant will become the king of the jungle. Next time I… next time I will uh, leave lizard's business to itself, uh, <laughs> Sadhguruji. Sadhguruji, if the farmer is informed about the rains and other uh, weather conditions in advance, maybe a, a two days or be it one week or one month sometimes, he is being benefited 
in, in farming. Similarly, a fisherman is being benefited when he is informed about the cyclones or tsunamis to come in advance. They are forecasting and predicting. If this is right, why can't astrology be useful for mankind in many ways by giving information in advance by experts, not, not anybody, by proper astrologers, proper scholars and eminent astrologers. I saw a video of yourself somewhere condemning, uh, uh, where, where did you uh, condemn? Condemn? Uh, did I yeah. condemn anybody? No, I, no, no. I, said, I, I have mean, not hanged anybody yet. You, you said, you said, there is no need for astrology. Why do you want to depend on uh, planets, lifeless planets? But can't we depend to an extent by availing the great science uh, all rishis developed since ages? See, the choice is this. So this is a popular question, everybody became quiet. Uh, we must understand this. There is material in this world, the five elements, the water, the wind, the earth, the fire, the space. And there are products which have come out of these five elements. From a simple plant, the simplest plant life to animal life to human beings, all these are the products of that. It is just that the products went on evolving. See, there was a time as civilizations grew, if you… if you look for ancient civilizations, most of the time you look for pottery pieces, yes? Pieces of pottery. What pottery means is you dug the earth and made pot out of it. You made this kind of pot, you made this kind of pot, you made that kind of pot, whatever kind of pot. That is the best they could do, thousand, two thousand years ago or five thousand years ago or whatever number. Today, you are digging the same earth and make a computer out of it. Same earth or no? The same soil with which you made a pot. Today you are building a spacecraft, isn't it? So this is what life has also done. With the same soil, with the same elements, what with which it created an amoeba, Today it has made a Kiravani, <laughs> all right? So, can you treat a pot and a computer the same way? We cannot… No, 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 if I keep a pot here, if I keep a pot here, we know pot will stay only here. If you don't handle it right, it'll break, otherwise it'll stay here, all right? But… Yes, Today you can make a computer which will walk, which will talk, which will go all over the place. But it goes to a program. But now what a human being means is, we have evolved a consciousness. That means we can go beyond the natural tendencies of the materials with which we are made. That's what it means. We can go beyond whatever directions the wind is maybe blowing this way, there was a time if wind blows this way, all the ships went that way. Today, it doesn't matter which way the wind is blowing, they will go where they want to go. Isn't it so? So, this is because of human consciousness, human ability and human will to do what? So similarly, all of you have a horoscope? All of you have a horoscope? Just one or many versions, come on. Eh? Those of you married, I'm sure you have at least two. <laughs> one was made to match the alliance, another was made at birth. <laughs> Those in the business know these things, okay? Now, why I'm calling it a horoscope is, I'm asking you a simple question. If there is a truly in intelligent human being in this hall, can you predict what they will do tomorrow? They may do something that's never been done on this planet, isn't it? But if you see a fool, you can say what he will do tomorrow. 
and what he will do the rest of his life. So if it can be written down on paper and given it to you that this is what you will do, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, does it mean to say the planets, the elements and various other influences have no influence on us? Definitely they have. They have influence on us. But the question is this, do you believe that inanimate things in the world, the planets, stars and whatever else are superior or human consciousness is superior? You must decide. Which should determine the destiny of which one? Should we decide the destiny of the planet or the planet should decide the destiny of who we are? So if you… if you do not take life into your hands, then planets will decide what should happen to you to some extent. But if you take life into your hands, planets cannot decide. You must know this, the best astrologers in the world in the country at least. If you tell them I am on a spiritual path, they will say, no, we won't make predictions for you because you have taken life into your hands. We can't make predictions for someone who's taken life into their hands <clears throat> I'm… I'm interested. I'm interested to see that every one of you take your life into your hands. What it means is, if you have mastery over your physical body, fifteen to twenty percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands. If you have mastery over your mind, fifty to sixty percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands. If you have mastery over your life energies, one hundred percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands <laughs>